Hi folks, this worksheet is a very tricky one to, uh, to understand. It's called Inheritance Tracing Worksheet Number 2. Uh, please pay attention. Um, this is hard. We have three classes that are related through inheritance. AP Student 2 extends Student 2. So AP Student 2 is a Student 2. And Student 2 extends Person 2. And up here in the upper uh, left, we have the client program that makes use of all this. So the very first line of code, AP Joe 1, is being declared and it's being instantiated as an AP Student 2 object. So the AP Student 2 class, we note that there's a property called my AP exam score. So uh, AP Joe 1 uh, does have an AP exam score. And he has this constructor that has the word super in it. Well, the word super is optional in this situation. This is optional. Even if it weren't typed out as the first line of that method, you would still come up here to the parent class in student2 and execute its default constructor. And to tell you the truth, the word student, empty parentheses, is, is even optional there. It could be typed out right where my mouse is waving, but it's not. So it's not required to type out student, empty parentheses. I'm sorry, the word super, empty parentheses. So we now, before we even set my grade equal to 9, we have to go up to the person2 class and call its default constructor. So right away, my age is being set equal to 0. And then it system out prints person2 was constructed. I will admit, we hardly ever system out print from within a constructor. It's just not something you don't do. But for the purposes of this worksheet, so that you know what executes and in what order it executes, the very first line of output that you should have down here is that person2 was constructed. I, uh, sorry, I can't really write uh, very well with this mouse, but I'm doing the best I can. So person2 was constructed, the letter C means constructed. Now we float back to the constructor here and we set my grade equal to 9. Notice the order that these things are being done. And then it releases to the system out print statement here that student 2 was constructed. So I make a note in my output window that student 2 was constructed. Then you guessed it, we are finally released and allowed to come uh, back to the AP student class in the lower right, and we're finally finished executing that line of code that said super. We now can set my AP exam score to 3. So I, do, I note that, I put a 3 here, and I notice that we're supposed to system out print that AP student 2 was constructed. So I'll just use the letter A to represent that uh, the uh, AP student number 2 was constructed. And I'm just going to use ditto marks here because uh, it's easier. And all of that ha happened because of this one line of code up in the client program right here. Next, we analyze this line of code, system out print AP Joe 1. Well, that makes use of the two string method. Let's go check out the two string method in the AP student class. Here it is, and we see the word super again. The word super down here means to go up one level and call that version of the method there. So we go up one level. And there there's a two string method that has return super dot. How annoying. So now before we do anything else, we have to go back up to the person class and look at its two string method, which simply says return, um, uh, that, that looks like it's just a, uh, spec on the photocopy machine there, so ignore that little dot there. Uh, it says return my age equals and then concatenated to my age. So our output now says my age equals zero. My A equals symbol zero. That was returned back to here, which concatenates with all this. So next to that would be my grade equals, um, and for uh, AP Joe 1, my grade is 9. So there's another equal symbol that gets put in there. 
And then all that gets concatenated from the left side to this. I'm now back down in this two-string method. My AP exam score equals. And I don't have much room for that, so I'm just going to put it like an M. I'm going to put an equals 3. On the AP exam, they'll try to mess with you. And they'll have wrong answers that put these things in like the uh, other arrangements. They'll have like uh, the, the something equals 3 to the left. And they'll put this 0 to the far right. They'll just have it all like crazy different ways. So far, this is what the output is from having executed these two lines of code up in the client. Next, we analyze this uh, construction statement, AP student 2, parentheses 3. That means we call the other constructor in this class down here. Well, when you call a other constructor, you're still calling all of the, super, the default constructors above you. So the word super is really typed out right here where I'm waving my mouse. Just like it was typed out here optionally, think of it as being typed out here. So all of this crap prints out right here. See all of this? That all prints out right here. And then we set, we set uh, my AP exam score equal to uh, exam score, which was uh, passed as a parameter to 3. Well, that's what it was by default, so that doesn't really change anything about AP Joe. He also has an age of 0 a grade of 9, and an AP exam score of 3. And then when we system out print him, the same thing prints out. So uh, that also prints out the same as uh, this. Any questions? Now moving on to AP Joe 3. We call the version, the overloaded version of the other constructor that takes 10 comma 5 as parameters. So we come down here. And now we notice that we have super parentheses grade. So we're sending his grade of 10 up to the other constructor in the parent class, which is referred to as super. And uh, that executes, but it first calls the person constructor, the default constructor. And um, finally, the, the, um, the two string is called. And when you see super dot two string, that means go up one level and call the two string there. I think we've already noticed that. So what we're left with is another copy of all of this. And then the last output is my age equals 0. And my grade equals 10. And my AP exam score equals a 5.